Hello, it's Leslie Taylor Brett here from Balance Saddle Company and the Balance Organisation. Uh, just making this little video as a reminder to those of you who already own Balance Saddles and are using the Balance Saddling System as a form of functional saddling. Um, to just a reminder and an encouragement really to check the pad system and the way the saddle's working on a regular basis because that's such a great feature of this way of working with the saddles and um, I think some people forget and they just use the same uh, pad arrangement the same saddle and assume that everything's as good as it can be but the great thing about using this approach is that it is designed to allow the owner of the horse and the rider of the horse to constantly sort of monitor and fine tune the way the saddle is feeling and working for the horse. So the question is, are you taking advantage of this feature and getting the best results from your saddle and the best comfort for your horse? Um, this, the next few slides and what I'm talking about, hopefully will encourage you to do that if you're not doing it already. And you might discover all sorts of interesting things and find that you can make things even better than they currently are. So hope it's useful for you. The great thing about the balance saddling system is that it provides in order to really assess the way a saddle is fitting if you like and we don't tend to use that word so often with the balance system because we don't um, want the saddle to fit in a conventional understanding of the word but how the saddle is actually sitting on the horse and therefore how it's balanced and how it has much stability it has you're going to want to put the saddle on without any pads underneath to start with. And first and foremost, make sure that the saddle is positioned correctly because it's surprising how often we see people months or even years after they bought their balance saddle and find that over time they've gradually started to put the saddle on a little bit too far forward because that's what we tend to see with so many other people who are riding um, in saddles is their saddles are put on habitually too far forward and it starts to look normal again so make sure that the saddle is positioned and pushed back so that it actually is allowing freedom of the shoulder blade and the photograph on the bottom right hand corner here down here um, you can see that this saddle is actually a little bit too far forward that has an impact on the balance of the saddle because when you put the saddle too far forward it tends to the shape of the body of the horse tends to lift 
push the saddle up at the front. And so it creates a sort of false impression of the balance of the saddle. And it can look very level, look stable when it's actually not in the right position. So when you move the saddle back so that it's well behind the shoulder blade to allow for that rotation, then you get a different picture because then the front of it will tend to drop more. And that's what you, you need to be careful of when you're actually positioning the saddle. So make sure you feel for the positioning of the horse's shoulder blade in its standing posture and make sure the saddle is sitting well behind that. And I'm talking about the part of the saddle really that corresponds to where the front of the tree sits. Uh, the more forward cut the saddle is in its flap shape, so a jumping saddle for example, the more difficult it is. But then of course the flap in itself is flexible. It's the solid part of the saddle and the tree that in particular you need to make sure is positioned further back. The picture of this, this black and white black and white picture here um, is showing a saddle that is sitting rather conventionally. In other words, it's sitting level without any of the pads on. And the levelness, when you're looking at levelness, remember you're looking more at the, um, the, the deepest part of the seat here and more than anything else, not trying to match the height of the pommel and the cantle. That's not reliable because different saddles have different pommels and uh, cantle heights. So it's the, it's the balance of the seat in particular. On this uh, slide, you can see the three images. The one on the left is showing the shape that is quite common to see with a uh, balanced saddle and in this method of the saddle taken from the front so that you can sort of see the amount of clearance over the horse's withers. Um, from a conventional saddle fitting point of view, this would probably look rather low and would be considered for the saddle to be too wide and try and use a, a narrower saddle to get more height. For when you're using a functional method of saddling, this is what you're looking for. The saddle looks a little lower, but it does have clearance. So if you slid your fingers along between the top of the horse's spine and the, at the wither area and the lowest part of the tree, which is slightly further back, you're still, you still have space to slide your flat fingers down um, and that's important the saddle must never be resting on the horses with us um, before you start padding it the padding is not there to hold the saddle up off the horses with us that's not that's not good um, so check on that and as long as you've got clearance as far as the horse is concerned clearance is clearance it's either clear and not putting pressure on or it's not clear and putting pressure on uh, so check for that. The middle picture shows again another saddle, one of our saddles that is sitting lower at the front than at the back. And you can see the back is lifting, which again shows you that you've got space to use our pad system underneath. And the one on the right is showing where, in this case, the saddle looked fairly level until the pommel was pushed down. Then you can see the lift at the back, which again, is indicating that we've got space to use our pad system. And remember our pad system, when it's used correctly, always has more depth of padding under the front of the saddle. That's why this is important.
So the next thing to think about is what sort of riding are you planning on doing? Uh, because that's going to have a, an effect on what padding system, how you pad the saddle and the sort of balance of the saddle that you're going to achieve. So for general riding, hacking out, where you'll sort of walk, trot, canter, maybe pop over a little jump occasionally, then you're trying to achieve an arrangement with the pads that has the saddle sitting level, um, no more pads than you actually need. There's no, no value in having more pads, uh, more layers, because that the more layers you have, the more potential you have for instability, unless the rider's very stable in their own riding. And there's no benefit to the horse to have more padding than is absolutely necessary. But you have to have enough to keep that comfort level and have always have a little bit more under the front than under the rest of the saddle. But you're looking to achieve a state where the saddle is balanced, the seat is balanced um, and stable. That's about it. That's just, it's very simple. If we look at the other end of the spectrum, we've got in remedial saddling where you're taking a horse that's probably got a lot of muscle wastage, either from a previous tight saddle or after a layoff because it's been lame or injured. You're, you're going to have a situation probably where the natural healthy shape and width of the horse is quite a long way from where it is now. So you're going to be working with a saddle that is quite a lot wider than its current damaged shape. And therefore, in, you're going to be using layered, layers of pads to replace the missing muscle. So, as I said, the more layers of padding you have and that you need, the more the potential is for the saddle to be to feel unstable to the rider and to the horse. So you have to be keeping that in mind. And once the saddle starts to feel particularly unstable, the horse doesn't benefit very much anyway. So, but hopefully, you know, in a remedial process like this, the actual demands that are being made on the horse and the type of riding that is being done is carefully monitored and it is a remedial form of training and riding. So it's a controlled thing. And so that, that the fact that you've got more padding underneath shouldn't be an issue. You're not going to be competing the horse when it's going through a remedial process. I hope. Now let's look at a couple of other situations where you would want to have a different approach to the padding to achieve a slightly different effect. Now if you look at dressage, now if the more skilled um, and trained the horse and rider are to achieve a really good state of engagement and collection, the more important this is. If you're only doing sort of very basic schooling and training then your most of the time your general padding arrangement is fine but once you start getting to a place where you are helping the horse to engage more what happens is in that engagement in that state the whole of the front of the horse starts to lift as the hind quarters engage and the hind feet step furthermore underneath the horse to carry the weight um, and so as the front, if you can imagine, the front of the horse is lifting and filling with the correct use of its body, that's going to have an impact on the saddle balance. So it will also lift the front of the saddle. And so if you start off with that saddle absolutely level before the session starts and at the beginning of the ride, you can you can you see how as the horse engages and the session progresses there's a risk that the saddle will start to sit up too high in the front lower at the back 
encourage the rider to sit too far back in the saddle and that in turn makes it much more likely that once the rider is sitting behind the movement of the horse for the rider to start driving the saddle forward up the horse's neck um, and that's not helpful either so with the more advanced dressage riders I think pay attention to that and you may well want to pad your saddle in such a way and use a width of saddle that sees it sitting very slightly lower at the front and I'm talking small degrees than you expect to see it at the end um, and obviously you still need to have more padding under the front than at the back um, to achieve the functional saddling effect but think, keep that in mind don't try to keep the, get the saddle absolutely level before you start when you know that during your session the horse is going to engage more and come up at the front and lower at the back um, and in contrast to that when we look at horses that are used for jumping um, particularly jumping higher levels and going cross country this is where the rider's weight tends to be focused much more in the front of the saddle for more of the time and so in this situation we do the opposite way around we would have the saddle sitting if anything slightly higher having more padding under the front so that here we can see some pictures of different padding arrangements and one of the things I'd say straight off is just to remind everyone that we do different types of saddle pads. Um, this one is what we call the regular quilt which is not terribly thick it's got the wool fleece lining and stuff but it's in terms of its actual thickness and the amount of cushioning it provides on its own it's not it's not huge. Um, so this is the sort of pad we would think that most the horses that have really recovered fully have got very little muscle wastage are very confident and um, strong in their bodies they can go into this pad quite happily and just with the minimum uh, padding which is the picture if you see the picture on the top left which is the regular weight quilt and a quarter inch JB pad so that's the minimum <clears throat> that's the minimum amount of padding that you can use when you're if you're still trying to use a functional balance uh, saddling method if you can't if you haven't got room for a quarter inch JB pad then the saddles not wide enough to use in this way then you'll talk then you're working with a, a more conventional fit and you won't get quite so many benefits um, <clears throat> the picture to the right uh, on the top I'll just point to that here so this one is the large quarter inch JB pad and sometimes if the horse needs a little bit more lift a bit further back this is a good option to use down in the bottom left corner here um, what I'm showing you is where we've put where I put the JB pad set slightly further back and this is definitely something that a lot of you could be experimenting with if you haven't done it already because moving the if you've got the option to be able to move the JB pad slightly further back so it's tucked underneath the front of the saddle it can make the front edge of the saddle feel very soft for the horse's shoulder to rotate under so having the JB pad right up at the front it's not wrong but it's going to feel firmer to the horse as the shoulders rotate back um, towards and under the front of the saddle if you've got room if you're able to and you experiment by moving the JB pad back a couple of inches so that the front so when you look at it you can't see the front of the JB pad um, at the front of the saddle you'll see that the front of the saddle is sort of floating slightly um, and I see a lot of horses that that just moving that pad back slightly can make a massive difference too. Uh, down here you can see another combination where we've got the quarter the regular weight saddle pad and then there's one of our wool base pads on top 
and then a, a, lay, a JB pad, a quarter inch JB pad on top of that. And again, layered in. And this is just a reminder that, and this is written in the manual um, and it's probably been said by your consultant, if you had a consultant involved, is that we definitely do not recommend that you use any of the half inch JB pad on top of the regular quilt pad because there's not enough thickness in that pad to sort of blend away the the the, the difference in the height between the half inch JB. Some horses won't really notice it, but there are other horses who are sensitive and they will notice. You don't. It's not a question of having um, pressure. It's actually where you can get a slight loss of contact, like a, a tiny bit of bridging in behind the end of the JB pad, just in a place where some horses find that difficult. So we, for that reason, we suggest that you don't use the half inch JB pad directly on top of the regular quilt. And in fact, most horses, certainly in my experience, if the horse is given the chance to choose and to express an opinion between having the regular quilt pad and what we call cushion quilt, which is you'll see in the pictures below, they will go for the cushion quilt. It's it's just has a nicer feel for most horses, I think. Um, it doesn't look as pretty um, from the rider's perspective, I think. In a saddle shaped pad like this, you don't really see much of it. It's more of an issue if you're using a square. But the cushion quilt is, to say, the, the first choice for, I would say, the majority of horses if they're allowed to choose. And on this pad, because it's thicker, then you can use the um, half inch JB pad set directly on top of it if you don't need a base pad. Um, there's another arrangement to the right hand uh, corner of the picture here. Um, here you'll see the cushion quilt saddle pad and then a layered effect of using the uh, quarter inch large JB and then a quarter inch regular JB on top again to create that sort of more lift which again this is a such situation where you might um, use for example one of the jbs for flat work and then add the second jb for jumping that's a good example I'm hoping as we're talking about this that you're seeing how that this whole system of using the pads is very uh, flexible and it's and it needs you to really be willing to experiment and as I said before not just assume that the pad system that you set off with when you get a saddle and start off with it is what you should be using for the rest of the horse's life or the rest of the time in that saddle. There's so many little things that you can do to fine tune and use the horse as your most reliable reference by trying things. So on this slide, uh, what I'm showing you here is a way of working with a remedial B pad. Now the remedial B pad can have its uses um, when you can see that there's a the horse is rather dropped in its back um, and you're trying to get the saddle to be level and stable we do two thicknesses a quarter inch and a half inch but you need to remember that whatever in order to work with this system remember you always have more depth of padding under the front of the saddle than at the back so here on the picture that you see on the 
top left hand corner here um, you have got the cushion quilt and then you've got a half inch JB at the front set back again to try and sort of make sure there's space uh, for the shoulders and then a quarter inch remedial B at the back so with this arrangement you've still got um, more depth of padding under the front on the picture on the right here now this is quite an interesting one because for some of you that have got horses that are um, very short in the back and you're trying to uh, keep the saddle pressure away from that back edge particularly if the horse is a bit weakened there you can also create this scenario where exactly the same pads half inch JB at the front remedial B at the back by having moving those towards each other so that they are I haven't got a photograph of it that's why there's a, a diagram um, by moving them together so that they sit in the middle um, but they don't extend all the way to the front and the back of the saddle you can see how the very back of the panels and the front of the saddle sort of floats and takes the pressure away from those areas and it's rather like if you if you could imagine having an adult saddle um, and using a pony sized base pad you're, you're achieving the same sort of effect but with these two smaller pads that's another thing to that you can experiment with if you happen to have a horse that is um, here's again a reminder of using the base pad in a slightly alternative way as well if you need to um, because in the same way as you can move the JB pad slightly back at the front of the saddle you can if you want to experiment with moving the base pad slightly forward again so you're achieving this effect and I'm trying to show it in these diagrams below so if if the base pad for example the purple line shows is trying to show the base pad if that extends all the way to the back then obviously you're going to get um, the saddle sitting on the whole of that pad that's not a problem for most horses um, but you can move the base pad slightly forward and then again you've got the back of the panel just floating and obviously when you're when the rider is sitting on that the saddle will come down and you will get some contact here because the the base pad, particularly if it's a quarter inch base pad you're going to get some but it will be slightly less and again for some horses this is sort of quite relevant where you've got a taller rider on a shorter backed horse um, where you're trying to sort of you need the rider to have the saddle that is big enough to accommodate their length of leg and size but you've got a horse that's slightly short in the back this is another thing that is useful to play around with
So before we come to the end of this, it's just going back slightly to the actual saddle pad itself. So don't forget that the very simplest of things, like making sure that the saddle pad itself and is always pulled up well off the horse's withers, both before and after you put the saddle on. And to make sure that the <clears throat> fixing straps for the saddle pad are fastened fairly firmly and high up on the girth straps. So we could all those things help to make sure that the saddle pad stays up off the horse's wither and stays in position. Um, you can also use that time to make sure that the saddle pad, in particular the one that goes against the horse's skin, is clean and free of hair. And I've done videos um, on this in the past because it's uh, surprising how many times you see saddles and, and the pads are really filthy and full of hair and lumpy and that's um, that's a no benefit doesn't matter how much you fine tune the balance of the saddle you're not going to get past the fact that the pad itself is um, not comfortable and I'm just leaving it with saying I really would encourage I'm hoping that this will encourage more of you to be willing to have another play around with the pad system that you've got so that you can experiment and obviously if you try different things and the horse clearly likes what you've been using that's great and you carry on doing that but you might discover um, a slightly different arrangement that the horse feels more comfortable in and that's how you work with this system it's a dynamic thing you work with it with the horse um, and keep monitoring if you get um, stuck and you are worried about things don't forget you can get access to balance trained uh, saddling consultants and even if you can't see them in person if traveling is out of the question is too expensive whatever you can nowadays more and more of them are doing distant consultations um, and, and assessments so there are ways around that if you need some help